Thanks for tuning in today uh, to our options video. And I know we're obviously here to talk about uh, the choices that you're about to make can sometimes be quite a daunting experience as you feel like you need to make the correct decision now to give you the best possibility of what you want to do after year 11. So when you finish and go off to things like sixth form, colleges, apprenticeships, I think sometimes you put so much pressure on yourself that you need to get the right decision now. And that can be quite challenging because you haven't experienced all of the subjects we offer. Things like beauty, business, media, they're all brand new subjects to you. However, I think it's important to just look at it as that you're choosing your options, that it's just a step on a journey that you are taking in your life to set you up for what you want to do when you finish year 11. I think it's important to discuss that like, when I was in your age, in year 11, uh, uh, year nine, when I chose my options, I chose GCSE Business, uh, Spanish, uh, PE, and ICT. A broad range of subjects. Uh, I didn't go on to choose all of these subjects when I finished year 11. It allowed me to see what I enjoyed. And that set me on to my next path when I stayed on at sixth form. I think it's important to think about all of the subjects we offer at GCSE. It just leads you on to that next destination. And when you're choosing these subjects, I want you to choose subjects that you are confident in, that you enjoy doing. I do not want you to choose a subject based on friendship groups just because your friend's doing a subject. You might not necessarily be in the same class as them. I also don't want you to choose a subject based on the teachers because you might not necessarily get that teacher at GCSE level. Please choose the subjects you enjoy doing that you could possibly see yourself doing once you finish year 11. So in today's video, you're gonna get a lot of information from about year nine options. Mr. Vahora is going to speak to you after about the decisions you need to make and the processes you need to follow, as well as some parameters you will need to follow. And he's gonna give you all the important dates. You're also gonna hear from Ms. Saunders, who is our careers advisor at the school, who is amazing giving guidance. She organizes trips to unis, she helps with Unifrog, she sets careers meetings up. So if you're struggling to see what you want to do at GCSEs, please book in to see Miss Saunders in the library to sit down about what you enjoy doing and she can set you up, okay, you enjoy doing this. This might some subjects you might enjoy doing at GCSE. But you're also going to hear from certain teachers of those subjects which are brand new to you, such as beauty, business, uh, triple science. Those teachers will obviously discuss those subjects and what you will likely expect if you chose it at GCSE next year. Throughout this whole half term, we're also going to be running certain taste sessions. Uh, for example, Dance and Beauty will be run, uh, running a one hour taste session for those who are interested. But then you've also got subjects like Media, who's going to be running a taste session in an ICT and doing an, uh, as well as doing this as an English module in your English lessons. Also, sports science is going to be running a taste session in their core PE lessons and digital art, they're going to be running a taste session in their art lessons. So these are all subjects which are brand new, but you're going to get a small taste session on what it might offer at GCSE. So if it's something you enjoy, that might be one of those subjects you might want to choose in one of your four options. For all the information you're going to get tonight, please don't hesitate to get in contact with myself or the school if you have any more questions. I hope you find the following information really helpful when you make the correct decisions on what you want to do at GTC. Hello and welcome to this presentation. I will be talking to you about the GCSC options process and I'll be paying more attention to the subjects you'll be studying, the requirements for certain subjects, and I'll give you a short demonstration using the online platform that we use called Fools. Okay. So now what we're going to do is first talk about the core subjects, okay? So regardless of what option you choose, every student in years 10 and 11 will study a core curriculum. So we all, you will all study GCSE, language, English language, literature, mathematics, and science. That band of subjects there at the top, that's your core curriculum. Okay, they're called your core subjects. English, you will ultimately get two GCSEs. Maths, you will get one GCSE. And GCSE Science, everybody studies, they will get two GCSEs. Now, if you don't choose an additional option, you will end up with two GCSEs, and that we call the trilogy, strangely. It's trilogy because you study 
biology, chemistry and physics, but you only end up with two GCSEs. Some of you who really like doing science will have the option of choosing an additional science module as one of your options. And what will happen is you will end up with three GCSEs and that's called triple science, not to be confused with trilogy. Trilogy, strangely, means two GCSEs. Triple means three because you study the GCSEs in more depth. It's a bit harder, so you have to make sure you're really good at science or your teachers will talk to you about whether you should do it or you shouldn't do it. And regardless of your options, every student has to study PE. It's just more of what you've been doing in year seven, eight and nine, just normal PE. You'll have PE lessons to keep you physically fit and active. And we will all study PSHCE. That's either weekly or fortnightly. Okay, that will be on a rolling curriculum. That is not an option. Okay, moving on now to the EBAT. Okay, so the government recommends that we study uh, a tranche of subjects which will open more doors once you leave school. Okay, so into the world of work or employment or further education, whatever you choose to do. Now, the government in 2025 would ideally like every single student, about 90%, let's say, to study either a history and geography as well as a language. But we don't do that. We're not going to force anyone to do that because we've got time till 2025. But what we'd like to do is tell students that no matter what, you will all have to study either a geography or history module or French, German and Spanish. So you have to do one of these five. OK, some of you may choose to do two of them. But everybody in the entire school will choose to do one of these. OK, and that will make up part of your EBAC study. OK, EBAC is short for the English Baccalaureate. OK, and that's because it, these subjects will hopefully open more doors to you in the future. Next are the option subjects. OK, so this is where it gets more fun. Uh, we at the Child Funds Community College will give you free reign to choose any of these subjects. OK, so if we go back to the EBAC, this will make your first choice. And that means you've still got three more choices. So you're going to choose three subjects from these here. These are your option subjects. Some subjects like art you've seen before. Um, design technology, you've done that before. Drama, you've done that before. Uh, you may have done a bit of food tech and done IT. Uh, you've done music before. RE. Okay, so, and then there's triple science. Okay, so that's an option where you can do more science. Okay, so that would mean you'd do about five extra hours of science a fortnight on top of your other two sciences. And then there are new subjects like business studies, computer science, um, product design. You've got engineering, hospitality and catering, uh, hair and beauty and sports. Uh, the PE department have brought in a new uh, qualification this year called Sports Science Cambridge Level 2. OK, so there's a lot of choice there. What you choose is entirely up to you. Um, so we don't like to limit your options, okay? And out of those, once you've chosen three of these, you will also be asked to provide two reserves, okay? A reserve one and a reserve two, okay? So what do we do next? So once I receive everyone's choice, I will then put it into a machine and then design blocks, okay? And these are for timetabling purposes only. That's mainly just for me. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but the main thing is, this program will then tell me, oh, hang on a minute, there's a few students here, maybe usually between 10 and 20 students, that don't quite fit because of the options they've chosen. OK, and that's why we ask for two reserve choices. And in the unfortunate event, some of you may have to go to your reserve choice. OK, but before we do that, before I put you into your reserve bucket, I will have a chat with you. 
and your parents and will work hard with you to make sure that it is what you want to do. Okay, and we're not just giving you something that you just half-heartedly committed to. And saying all that, what will happen in September is, yes, you'll start your courses, but some students may drop the course you really wanted to get into. Or alternatively, what we do is we sort of give you a grace period of up to like about a month where you might think, you know what, I, I've chosen art and design. I really, really want to do level two catering. OK, and if there's space on the course and it works with your timetable, I'll move you into that subject. OK, so we do have a grace period in September. OK, but once you've chosen these options, we won't do any moving about, not until late in the year. Now, this is a big process for you. Obviously, Mr. Howard's talked to you about this. Uh, your tutors will be talking to you about this. But who can help you decide what options to choose? Because, you know, there's so much choice and you've never had choice before. So your form tutor is your first port of call. They'll be talking to you daily. Find out from them what their subject is. Find out from them what subjects they chose. You'll be talking to your subject leaders. Okay, so they're the heads of departments. Uh, they're the people who are sort of in charge of departments. And you can always go and talk to them. You can always go and talk to your teachers about, do you think I'd be any good at this subject? You know, I've not ever studied engineering before. Could I do it? Will I struggle with it? Um, if you've got any concerns that the teachers may not be aware of, you might want to talk to them about those. Um, year leaders. Now, year leaders, Mr. Howard's going to be talking to you in assemblies. He'll be coming to your tutor groups. So he's got a wealth of knowledge. You know, he's been a subject leader as well. He runs economics at GCSA level here. And he's taken students through the options process in the past. So he can, he's going to help you all the way. So don't worry about that. You've got your older students in the sixth form or students that have left that you know of. Your friends and family, and that's probably the most important one. They know you better than anybody else. So they'll always be by your side, but please, please do talk to them beforehand. That do you think I should choose French or do you think I should choose geography? Okay. And what would be best if I want to be a doctor? And all of those things are going to go through your head. You might want to be an architect or you might want to do uh, an elect electrician's course after you leave school. Or you might want to become a plumber or you might want an apprenticeship with Martin Baker down the road or whatever it is. But always keep in the back of your mind, what do I want to do for my career? And then we've got an amazing person who works at school called Mrs. Sanders. She lives in the LRC and she's our leader for careers and employability. And she's got a wealth of knowledge about which courses are best suited for which jobs and so on. Okay, so definitely go and find her, go and talk to her. She's here every single day of the week and she can advise you, okay? She can make an appointment for you, all right? So how are you going to choose? I may have covered some of these bits, but the main question is what really interests you and motivates you, okay? What subjects do you really enjoy? Right? If you enjoy geography so much more, pick that one. If you enjoy history, I mean, sure, you can pick that too. Okay? So, have you researched your options? Talk, that means previous slide, have you talked? This is your research, talking to these people, talking to your friends, to, talking to your family, talking to your teachers. But what you must not do is just ask your mates, hey, what are you doing? I'll just copy you. No, that's every single student is an individual, you've got to do what you enjoy, okay? Do you see that keyword there, you? You, what do you enjoy? Have you researched your options, okay? So when you leave here, you and your friends are gonna probably do very, very different careers, okay? And your strengths are not the same as theirs, okay? It's extremely important you don't just follow what your mates are doing, because what will happen is, in history, we might have four different groups, you might not be in the same group as them. In geography, we'll probably also have four different groups. Okay, so each subject will have lots of different groups and you won't necessarily be in those subjects, okay? With your friends. Now, are some subjects for boys only? No, engineering, is it just for boys? No, that's a myth. 
That's absolute rubbish. A Heron Beauty? No. Go and speak to Miss Raina in the um, Karma Academy upstairs in Shikara, and she can talk to you. Uh, it's not just for girls only. That be Heron Beauty, of course. Okay. So those myths have long gone now. So you need to definitely go and talk to your teachers and find out, look, what if I'm the only boy doing this course? What if I'm the only girl doing this course? You know, does, is, that, is that a bit weird? Uh, absolutely not. And they will talk to you through all that. Careers, again, we've mentioned that before. Go on to what subjects do employers want? Fast forward into the future. If you want to do A-levels, should you do triple science if you want to be a doctor? okay or a chemist and should you do a language if you want to go and work in, in translation do you see you've got to think ahead so you don't short sell yourself okay so these options are really really important because they do have a bearing on what you what subjects you can do in the future okay but it's not the be all and end all let's say you didn't choose french at gcse and then you want to do it for a level People learn things very, very quickly. Anything can happen. Okay, what are the entry requirements? The main subjects really are for hair and beauty, you will have an interview if you've chosen that subject, purely because uh, they've got a limit to how many students that can do that course. Engineering, because it's in a technology lab, only a few students, you know, we can't fill that room with 30 students. Okay, so some subjects will have a limit as to how many students they can take on. Some will be based on academia, like for example, computer science. In maths, you should be in sets one or two because the maths knowledge is really important to do computer science because it's a very difficult course. If you want to do triple science, your teachers will recommend currently you're working above and beyond where you should be, okay? So otherwise, if you're, if you're not turning up to class or your behavior's not great or your homework's not being done, Choosing triple science is not for you, okay? Because that's going to be another subject that requires a lot of hard work. What doors will open for further education? That's FE, further education or employment. We've spoken to that, spoken about that. And then there's Mrs. Sanders in the LRC. Okay, moving on. So I don't want to take too much of your time. This is just the beginning of your journey. If you've got any questions, please get in touch with me. My name is Mr. Vahora. I share an office with Mr. Howard, the other assistant principal and um or mr howard your year leader he's the one you should approach or your tutor in the first point at the first point of call if it's about the actual act of choosing the options i'm going to show you a demonstration in a minute about how you choose your options definitely come and find me but no matter what happens let's say you've chosen your options and you think i've made a mistake come and see me you think oh dear, i shouldn't have chosen food tech i wanted to do geography come and see me Okay, but we give everyone a grace period in September. Let's say you start your courses and you start doing uh, hospitality and catering and you just think, you know what, this is not what I want to do. I'm three weeks in, my heart's not in it. I don't want to do any practicals. I'd rather do history. Come and see me. If there's space on the course, I can change that for you and if it fits with your timetable. Okay, now this is the fun bit. Tools online, okay? Tools is just another word for saying timetabling, online uh, system. Now, every student will get a login and a password. You must keep that login safe, okay? And I'll give you all the password over the next week. Now, the, you will see this platform. You'll access it via our website. And in the demo, I'll show you exactly what the website is and how to get onto it. But the deadline is Thursday the 6th of April. It's during the holidays, but you make sure you get it all done before Good Friday, okay? The sooner you do it, I would say, look, once you've got your login, most of you, 80% of you definitely probably know what you want to do. You'll just log in, it takes literally three minutes. Page one, page two, page three, done, okay? You'll pick an EBAC subject, you'll pick three options, you'll pick two reserves, Press submit, Bob's your uncle, okay? Now what I'm going to do is give you a short demonstration of the tools platform where you will actually choose your options. So what you do is go into your browser, whether it's Google or wherever you're using, you type in 
carfonts.net forward slash options. Okay, just like that. Okay, carfonts.net, not .org, forward slash options. And you will see this platform here, options online, collecting student choices online. Now, every student will get a username. It will usually be the first letter of your first name followed by four letters of your surname. Okay, so that'll be five letters. And then your password is four numbers randomly chosen, which you'll be given. There we go. And then you press submit. Okay, I don't want to say that. And you should then see the Charfonts Community College Year 9 Options 2023. Just make sure it is 2023 and it will be. These are the choices for Imran Bahora. That's me. You can click here for an example if you want to. Or you can click here for more information. And then the most important bit is this blue box here. And as you can see, it's got five subjects in it, okay? So the blue box has got your French, German, Spanish on the top row, and a geography and a history subject. And this is part of the EBAC we were talking about earlier. You have to choose one of these to proceed. So I really like French. I did it in year seven, eight, and nine. So I'm going to choose it again for year 10 as my GCSE choice. Now, some of you might be thinking, oh, but what about history or geography? You can choose that in the next section. So this counts as choice number one, as it says here. Choice one. This is my first choice. OK, and then I click next. If you don't choose anything here, you can't move on. So make sure you've picked a subject. Now, this is stage two. We're going to pick three more options here. As you can see here. It says, please enter your three choices by entering choices two, three, and four. Not one, two, three, because cho choice one's already been done. Now, I really like history. So that's going to be my second choice. I really want to do it. I'm going to put them in the order I really want the subjects. So definitely French, definitely history. I really like history. I really like RE. So I'm going to choose RE as my third choice. And then for my fourth choice, I was going to choose triple science, but I'm not too sure if I need triple science for my job when I finish um, my GCSEs and then maybe go on to college or an apprenticeship. I'm not sure quite what I want to do, but to keep my options open, I do like DT. So that's going to be my fourth choice. As you can see here, it says, please mark a reserve choice first reserve by putting an R, and then we're going to choose a second reserve as well. We'll use the letter capital S, just an S. The computer will make it capital for you. And as you can see here, French has already been selected. So in case I don't get, say, DT, I'd still like to do a DT subject. So I might go for art as my reserve. So I'll put in an R in art. Okay, and it automatically makes it capital. And it's still saying, please select a second reserve. So a second reserve, we need to use the letter S. And if I don't get any of my choices here, do you know what? I would still go for them. If I don't, I would go for computing. It's my second choice. It's my second reserve rather, not second choice. Okay, once you're happy with that, we scroll down the page and we're going to press, sorry, I don't know if you can see that here because it's in the way, just like that. I'm going to submit this form. So click at the bottom, submit. And then it takes you to this page for you to check. Let's confirm the choices. First choice, French. Second is history. Then RE. Then design and tech. Art and computing is my second reserve. Okay, but the most important ones are your first four. Right, what do I want to do? I'm not quite sure. Um, don't know what I'm doing uh, when I graduate, but I could thinking about maybe going into engineering or is that what I want to do? No, I can't because I've not chosen any engineering subjects, which I should have. But let's say I want to be an academic and I want to be a lecturer. So I will put in lecturer at university one day. And it's only when you press confirm, you've sealed the envelope. Okay, so just double check 
You can always go back and change your choices. So at this stage, it's really good to check with somebody else. Check with a member of your family or a friend saying, yeah, you're happy with that. Confirm choices, okay? And then you get a thank you page. So I would like to get an email just in case. I'm going to type in my email. That's it, imranbahora at childfunds.org. You type in your email, not mine. Press submit, and that's it. But what I'd like you to do is just, your email will most likely have gone to your junk email folder. Okay, that's that. Click to log out. It'll take you back to the login page, and you're all done. How easy was that? Okay, any questions, please give me a shout. My name is Mr. Bahora. I share an office with Mr. Howard. Okay, so any questions, please shout. Okay, thank you very much. This is Christine Sanders. I'm the leader of careers and employability at the Charles Community College and support students from years seven through to 13. I appreciate that choosing GCSE options can be tricky and it might feel at times as well that um, it, it's early. It feels early to start thinking about the future and, and jobs that our, our children might do. But evidence shows that the earlier we encourage students to think ahead and identify areas of interest, the more motivated and focused they're likely to be. So regardless of the GCSE options, we do like to have these conversations with students um, and tend to start them in year seven. So what do I want to cover very quickly um, on this in this presentation? I know there's been various activities taking place in school to support our students. Um, so I don't want to repeat anything if I can help it. And um, what I thought I would do is just remind you about Unifrog and how it can support you. A quick slide on the key questions that we're asking our students uh, regarding the GCSE options. And then I wanted to share a little bit of information about looking ahead, which can be helpful in encouraging um, students to think about, think more about jobs and what they might want to do in the future. So a reminder of Unifrog. So Unifrog is our online one-stop shop careers tool, which was rolled out to our year nines in December. Um, all the students have completed the personality and interest questionnaires. And as a result of this, um, a personality profile is created based on the answers. The students then can use these as to, to sort of explore different careers and subjects that are commonly associated with their personality types. So I'd just like to point out to you the careers library and subjects library, which are really, really helpful. They have a lot of different career options on there and they, it includes interviews of people working within certain industries. And there's lots of subjects. You can look at subjects and see where subjects can lead you. So again, really good to initiate discussions about what sorts of subjects a student might take. The sorts of questions that we're asking students and you might want to talk to your, your children about, and I'm sure you are already, is what subjects do they enjoy? What really interests them? And why do they enjoy the subject? So are they quite creative? Do they like being creative? Do they enjoy problem solving? Do they enjoy presenting information, writing, reading? What is it that they really like? And what are they good at as well? Because often we're better at things that we're good at. So thinking about all of those subjects is really good. And then if any of them do have any ideas of which career they want to go into, then perhaps work backwards, which subjects might be useful for those careers. Think about a balanced range of subjects, perhaps a variety to keep options open as well but try to um, just try to think about what it is they really enjoy, because when we have conversations with them about the world of work, that's what we want them to be doing, at, at, you know, roles that, that they really enjoy. Just a couple of other things then I wanted to add. Sometimes conversations about the job market um, can be quite helpful and um, can inspire students when considering future options. So one of the slides I've got here is that the five sectors of the Bucks economy that employ the most people. So you can just see there the highlighted areas. So education, health and social work. You've got wholesale and retail there as well. So that just gives you some ideas of where the, the, you know, the high um, employment is at the moment in Buckinghamshire. 
And then also something that's quite interesting, and I've used this slide before with students, is talking about the jobs that have been in the highest demand most recently. And looking at those, seeing if there's any interest in any of them, helping students to understand what, what's involved in those jobs. And then thinking, well, what subjects might you need if you were interested in going into any of those roles? I also share often with the students the large organisations that we have locally. So we're very lucky that we've got, you know, pharmaceutical, we've got charity organisations, engineering, education, and we've got Pinewood Studios, obviously, as well, and Martin Baker, all amazing organisations that we have local to us. And then also talking about the areas of the economy that, that our county specialise in. So we've got the space propulsion, which is the, the Westcott um, space cluster located in Aylesbury. We've obviously got broadcasting, high-end TV and film because we have Pinewood, we have the National Film and Television School in Beaconsfield as well. And then down to, you know, engineering or through along to engineering manufacturing. So we have Martin Baker, who manufacture the um, ejector seats. So we have some amazing technology and fantastic organisations, very local. And again, conversations like this, talking about some of these things um, can inspire students to, to consider what they might like to do in the future. So just very quickly then, what where we are currently in terms of um, what happens at year 11. So there is still a requirement to stay in learning up to the age of 18. So the options will be sixth form to do A-levels or BTECs or a combination of those. There are lots of local um, colleges for further education where some of our students go. And then you also have T-levels, which is, this is an introduction, this is a new, um, a new course, two years, um, which is an alternative to A-levels. And there's a little bit more employment um, link that it links in uh, in the studying. Um, they're quite new. Not every college delivers them yet, and not every subject. But this is something that will um, may well be there a little bit more in a couple of years' time. And apprenticeships as well. So some of our students go on to do apprenticeships at year eleven. So I just thought it worth sharing those with you in terms of thinking ahead and what your children might like to be thinking about and again working backwards and thinking what might be useful to get to where they want to be. Some useful web websites here for you, so local market information and then the I could and BBC Bite Size Careers are great and Unifrog obviously to do lots of exploring. The advisor website, there is actually a live web chat that we have access to so you can ask um, uh, professionals as well about um, careers for your children. I hope this has provided you with a little bit more support when considering options for your children and um, I wish you luck with the process and thank you for listening. Welcome to EAL Engineering Level 2 First Certificate in Engineering Technology. This course is equivalent to a GCSE and at the end of the course you get a pass, merit or distinction. What will you do? So roughly speaking, 40% of the lessons will be practical lessons working with metal. We only work with metal. 20% will be technical drawing lessons, otherwise known as orthographic drawing. 20% will be writing reports and 20% will be theory. How are you assessed? Unit one, we learn about manual handling, which is how to lift stuff properly. Unit two is engineering drawing or the orthographic drawing. Unit three, we test your knowledge on material properties. Unit 17, you're going to be making those three products in the corner of the screen, then evaluating them using reports, and you'll do one written test as well. The synoptic assessment is a piece of coursework which will test everything that you've learned so far. So we will plan how to make something, we will draw that product, and then we will make it. There's also some writing and mathematics involved. Those are all the coursework units and then right at the end you get a final exam. It is 40 questions and they are multiple choice. So this is a great course if you're not a big fan of doing big written exams. Is this course for me? We only take students that are safe in a workshop environment, who enjoy working with metal, enjoy technical drawing, can work to a high level of accuracy. Accuracy is an important word in engineering and are hard working and willing to spend time outside of lessons. If you don't get that coursework done in the lesson, then you need to come after school or at lunchtime to catch up. 
What are your next steps? Many students stay at the Chalfons Community College and do A-level product design. You can go to a college course where you can do things like construction, electronics, plumbing, mechanics, plastering, roofing, to name just a few. There's also apprenticeships you can do with big companies like British Airways, HS2. And we've also had Mars Wrigley do a presentation just this week by Year 11 students. On screen are just some of the engineering careers that you can go into. If you do have any questions, come see me in room 10 or 11, or you can email me at darrensaw at chalfons.org. Thank you for listening. Welcome to uh, this PowerPoint presentation on um, GCSE Business Studies based on um, Year 9 options into Year 10. Um, and I'm just going to talk you through um, the course, how it's structured, um, a little bit about assessment and then potential careers that this could lead into. So in terms of how the course is structured, so um, we typically split theme one and theme two. So they're essentially two units that we do um, for the course. Um, we split them based on year groups. So in year 10, um, you will study theme one. Um, and then in year 11, you'll study theme two, um, leading to a little bit of revision based on all of the key concepts. Um, this year, we've um, got through the content quite quickly um, based on sort of people not having to isolate, which is brilliant. Um, and um, we will potentially be starting theme two um, towards the end of year 10, um, which is great because it leaves just a little bit more um, scope for revision um, in year 11 based on going over both themes. Um, so the theme one is very much based on small businesses um, and how businesses start, uh, how entrepreneurs create companies, um, and this also links into people starting their own company and how they have obstacles that they need to overcome based on that um, and any kind of issues that might arise um, as part of a startup. Um, and then theme two, we look more at larger corporations um, and how businesses grow from being um, a small company to being a much bigger corporation and the uh, difficulties and rewards that may be encountered as a result of a business getting bigger. Um, in terms of content, um, we try to make the course um, relatively practical based. So we always have real life company examples that we use. Um, and I just have to emphasize that this isn't a GCSE where you will sit and watch Dragon's Den, which unfortunately I think some people think when they pick this course, um, it is a challenging course. There is a lot of content. Um, it's very, very content um, heavy. There's lots and lots of, lots of things that you have to remember um, for the exams. Um, and also there's quite a lot of maths based elements as well as written elements. Um, so you will be assessed on um, a number of um, different skill areas um, based on types of exam questions that you will have to answer. Um, so you will have as part of your assessment some multiple choice questions and some short answer questions, but you will have large um, essay based, based questions. So we have nine mark questions and 12 mark questions as well. Um, so in terms of your written English, um, that needs to be um, something that is quite easy for you um, and also uh, mathematical based. So 10% of each of your exam papers um, is based on mathematical skills. Um, so percentage changes, working out profit, working out um, costs and revenue that businesses have. And um, so it is quite important that you are relatively good at maths as well. Um, in terms of main assessments, um, so as I said, theme one typically is uh, year 10 based and theme two is year 11 based. Um, so students um, will be assessed throughout year 10 and 11. Um, so there will be mini assessments and um, in year 10, they will have um, a bigger assessment right at the end. Um, but students will, will be typically assessed on each topic that we do. Um, so in theme one, we have five subtopics. And then in theme two, we also have five subtopics. So students will be assessed at the end of those um, key concept topics um, just to make sure that we can consolidate learning and students understand what skills um, are required of them. 
Um, the whole GCSE um, is based on students taking two written examina examinations, which, which will be taking place in um, the summer of year 11, so May and June time. Um, so we have a theme one assessment, which is worth 50% of the qualification um, and is an hour and a half long and 90 marks. Theme two is exactly the same. So it's 50% of the overall course qualification and also is an hour and a half and is 90 minutes um, long. Um, and this looks at, so each, uh, each paper is structured in the same way. Um, it has uh, questions based on um, key concepts, but also linking to key businesses that are part of the examination as well. Um, so this is a course for learners who wish to um, know and understand business concepts, business terminology, business objectives, the integrated nature of business activity and the impact of businesses on individuals and the wider society. Um, so even though COVID has brought a lot of um, sadness and a lot of um, issues for people and businesses, um, it's a very topical concept for um, business studies at GCSE um, because it's had such an, such an impact on the economy. Um, so it makes it very, very relevant um, in terms of looking at businesses that have suffered particularly for the service industry, um, tourism industry. Um, and it makes it very, very real. Um, and it makes it a lot easier to understand uh, different terminology concepts based on um, what's happening in the economy at the moment. Um, apply knowledge and understanding of contemporary business issues, so such as COVID and to different types and sizes of businesses. So typically um, local businesses have tended to do slightly better, for example, in COVID because um, they haven't been um, subjected to big closures of lots of companies um, and they've kind of thought more outside the box and it allows businesses um, and students to then make those cross links between them. Um, develop as enterprising individuals with the ability to think commercially and creatively. The idea is that potentially this is something as a subject that inspires you um, as a student to start up your own company and it's the start of pro the process of equipping you with skills um, that maybe you could use in the future if you wanted to start your own company. Um, develop as effective and independent students and as critical and reflective thinkers. So really thinking about um, rather than a company just making profit, what other reasons are their businesses and why um, do people start their own company? Um, use an inquiring critical approach to make informed judgments, um, investigate and analyze real business opportunities, um, and develop and apply quantitative skills relevant to business. So um, assessing things like profit and loss accounts, cash flow forecasts, that's one of the concepts that we do learn um, in this GCSE. So in terms of progression, so um, as my subject, I'll always promote this subject as a, a good grounding for other areas of life because it doesn't limit you um, entirely and it's based on the real world. Um, so it's a very interesting um, GCSE because it is based on what's actually happening around us um, and how we are progressing um, as a country and as an economy and looking at how other countries like Brazil and China um, are, you know, becoming um, big sort of players in the market. So a GCSE in business studies allows students to understand more about the business world and motivates and challenges students preparing them to make informed decisions. So we do look um, at recruitment and selection and different types of positions and jobs that potentially students could apply for once they leave. Um, and students can progress from this qualification to a number of different academic and vocational qualifications. Um, so we do have um, a very big uptake um, for A-level um, and we are probably one of the most popular uh, GCSE subjects. So we've got four classes this year of about 30 students. So we are um, oversubscribed, um, if you like, um, as well as A-level. Um, so we have about 120 students taking GCSE business. Um, and we also have 20 students that take uh, A-level business this year, um, as well as DTEC business and as well as economics as well. Um, and the knowledge and skills gained from GCSE business um, support students' entry into employment or other training in specific aspects of business. Um, and it does provide students with a very strong foundation um, in any kind of career that they uh, partake, um, something like banking, sales, human resources. Um, and it just gives students a very good grounding based on that. 
Um, if you do have any questions, uh, whether that's in school, so if students do have any questions or if you as a parent have any questions as well, uh, please do feel free to email me on louisefisher at chalfonts.org um, and I'll be happy to answer any of those questions. Thank you for listening. Hello, um, my name is Mrs Rayner and I am the leader for beauty therapy in Chalfonts Community College and I'm also the director of Karma Academy the private beauty training um, school that is based in the sixth form of the Chalfonts Community College. And I'd like to talk to you today about the year nine option subject that we're offering. And it is a VTCT level one in an introduction to the hair and beauty sector. But let me just say straight away that we mainly concentrate on beauty, um, the beauty subjects, and we only do one unit of hair. So if you are thinking that hair is more the subject that you're interested in, then this is not going to be the subject for you. So the course is broken down into three different levels. And we start with the award in year 10, um, where we cover the um, units of introduction to the hair and beauty sector. And that's really looking at um, the jobs that are available, career progression, um, what you might be earning in the industry, and we do quite a lot of research um, for that. We then um, do uh, presenting a professional image, and that's really about how you would present yourself in the salon and um, as part of the uh, industry that you're looking at. And we also do manicure as our practical based subject. But all of the practical subjects have a theory element to them as well and that would be anatomy and physiology of the area that you're working on so with a manicure it would be looking at the structure of the nail and you will also learn how to do a basic manicure which includes nail painting um, as the practical. We move on then to the certificate and we would be covering uh, nail art in that uh, firstly and that really is because it is a really nice progression from manicure. We then move on to skincare and looking at the theory of skin, the anatomy and physiology of the bones and the muscles of the face and the skin. And then the practical is learning a 30 minute basic facial and understanding different skin types and products that you might use on different skin types. In year 11, we'd be moving on to makeup it's really good to understand what the skin, how the skin works, which you will have covered in skincare before moving on to makeup, because makeup can be really dictated to you by your skin type. So in that you'll be learning makeup techniques and um, then doing a basic makeup as your practical assessment. We then move on to head massage and you would learn an Indian head massage. We will then move on to plaiting and twisting. So that's where you learn to do different plaits and twists. We actually bring in a specialist um, tutor for this uh, subject and that will be done in a workshop environment. As well as those practical subjects, we also have um, some supporting subjects, which would be reception, health and safety. We look at display, which links really nicely with reception and working with others because you need to understand how you would be um, working in as part of a team, which is what you would be expected to do working in the beauty um, environment. So the subject is uh, coursework based. There is no exams, but we do have um, the coursework has to be passed. So there is a standard that has to be reached with that. And also we have practical assessments. So there will be a standard that you need to reach to pass uh, and you may have to do more than one treatment in each subject. So for example, with skin care, you would have to treat someone with a dry skin, somebody with an oily skin and somebody with a combination skin. So you need to treat three different um, clients. We get you to work on each other at the level one um, stage, but you, uh, we can and do um, encourage you to bring in um, family members to, to be your clients uh, on various occasions. But you don't have to do that. You can pass the assessments working on each other. 
We do like to, to encourage you to be uh, work as a, as a team. You will have, there will be small class sizes. Our maximum class size is 14. And we would expect you to expect you to work with different um, people within that group. So you may not just be with one person all the time. You might move around because obviously we all have different skins and different nails. And it's quite good to, to work with different people just to, to understand that. So you would need to um, have a beauty tunic. We, our uniform for the beauty is a tunic and leggings and a black school shoe. We're very fussy about, the, um, about that. It, it has to meet our uh, exam and award body um, recommendations. You would be expected to have your hair up for the practical lesson. Uh, you are not allowed to wear acrylic or gel nails because our exam board doesn't allow it and we have to monitor that really carefully so um, that would be the expectations from us. It's a really rewarding subject and you can go on to um, study in the sixth form professional qualification which is MVQ level two and MVQ level three and we have had lots of um, really lots of success we've been running the courses now for 16 years so um, it's been a very rewarding uh, subject to teach and I look forward to seeing some of you on the course. Thank you. Why choose dance? The majority of dance courses will involve a combination of assessment methods that include analysing professional dance works learning, rehearsing and performing routines, choreographing, rehearsing and performing dance routines and evaluating skills and performances. Dance obviously links to performing related careers such as dancers and choreographers. It's also a necessary qualification for dance teachers and dance therapists. Dance might also be useful for other careers, such as physical therapists, personal trainers and dance critics. Dance can also develop transferable skills that are in demand across almost all industries. These skills include teamwork when creating group performances, working well under pressure and meeting deadlines by learning routines and through performing live work creative and critical thinking skills through analysing and interpreting dance works, presentation skills through regular performances, written communication skills through producing academic work, improvisation skills to ensure live performances and assessments run smoothly, self-motivation and perseverance when rehearsing and improvising performance work, negotiation skills when working on a shared vision in groups cohesively, confidence through working with others and through performing regularly, self-reflection and adaptability through assessing your own work and making changes based upon the needs of the piece, empathy and emotional intelligence through working with a range of emotive themes and topics, and discipline through developing a high work ethic and disciplined approach to hard work. Dance also helps to develop physical skills such as balance, strength, stamina and coordination. Don't choose dance if you think there will be no writing needed. All academic qualifications require writing. You don't want to perform in front of a live audience or you don't want to be recorded performing. All dance courses require this. You aren't prepared to give up some of your own time outside of lessons to rehearse. Do choose dance if you are creative and enjoy working practically. You like working both alone and as part of a group. You enjoy watching and analysing dance and you enjoy performing to an audience. If you would like any further information about choosing dance as an option, please speak to the dance department in your school.
Hello there, this is Mr. Rhodes, head of, head of Key Stage 4 PE, and I'm here to talk to you about the Sports Science Vocational course at Chalfons Community College at Key Stage 4. Um, so the course is for those that are enjoying sport or enjoy uh, the idea of sport, but more so for those that are interested in how to develop uh, performances within sports and helping with physical ex exercise and fitness. Um, there are many misconceptions about the course uh, which I'm going to address and I want to make sure that it is very clear as to what the course entails and who it is for. Um, as you can see it can highlight many different career pathways and within sport there are many many uh, careers within it and this course will cover only just a few potential career pathways. So what you need to know, and this is where I'm going to try to highlight some common misconceptions around the course. Uh, you need to be good at meeting deadlines as the first year and a half of the course will be very coursework based and you will need to be able to meet deadlines regularly. By failing to meet those deadlines, it can hold you back and it can actually immediately affect your final grade as the work you produce in year 10 will have an impact on your final grade. There are pros and cons to this. Those of you that are uh, hard workers and want to complete work straight away after learning it, uh, rather than in a final terminal exam, that can be quite beneficial. However, if you are someone that might struggle to meet those deadlines or someone that doesn't often uh, meet deadlines for homework currently, uh, it will potentially have an impact on your final grade straight away uh, and due to the time constraints we are under on the course it can limit opportunities to catch up. You should have an interest in sport and performance and development in sport. Um, if you enjoy sport I would say enjoy core PE you will have opportunities to play uh, sports within PE but if you are interested in the roles and careers within sport and developing performance and you're keen to learn how to learn and improve in sport, this is definitely a course for you. If you just enjoy playing sport, I recommend enjoying core PE and maybe not necessarily sports science as it is a lot more based around the hows and when to develop ability and improve performance within sport. There is a high workload, as I mentioned, uh, with a lot of assignment work throughout the course. Uh, you will typically do six to seven lessons of content being taught to you by the, the PE team, and then you'll be expected to complete work within two to three weeks, maybe less, depending on the size of the task. Um, and again, you need to meet that deadline. If you are someone that gets distracted easily within the lessons and maybe go off task, that will hold you back and you might uh, get left behind in your work. There is no extra practical, uh, very common misconception that there is extra practical and you just get to run around within PE or uh, GCSE PE uh, kind of courses, but there is absolutely no pra extra practical. I repeat, there is no extra practical. It's not a GCSE football or netball. You are purely trying to find out and learn how to improve performance in sport and as i said if you're someone that works hard within pe at the moment trying to improve all techniques and, and learn strategies it is definitely the course for you if you are someone that prefers to play and just enjoy playing sport you will enjoy core pe just as much and maybe sports science isn't the course for yourself assessment grading so 40 percent of your exam in june uh, in year 11 is going towards your final grade and 60% is an assignment or coursework based. So it is a coursework heavy um, course, but there will be an exam worth 40% that will be in year 11. So all the coursework will be done and out of the way by the time that comes around uh, and also highlights the importance of meeting deadlines as we want to ensure we have enough time to cover the content and teach the content in time for that exam. Uh, there is no practical assessment, as you can see, um, unlike the GCSE PE course, where there is a practical element, you are not assessed on your ability to be an athlete. 
if you're not good at PE or if you're not a sporty person, that is fine. If you are still interested in sport and the potential careers highlighted in, on this course, then absolutely you can still enroll within this course. It is quite inclusive um, as long as you are interested in some of the content, which I will go over now. So in year 10, uh, you will do a unit which will take up the majority of the year consisting of five assignments on applying principles of training. So you'll be taking on the role as a fitness trainer or a sports scientist or um, a personal trainer. Um, and you'll be conducting fitness tests, which students will have to take part in to collect data that they will then interpret uh, and then devise a plan on how to improve their fitness. Um, which they will also have to carry out. So they will need to be somewhat into fitness and improving their fitness levels uh, during this time. Um, and then towards the end of the year 10, they will also start their nutrition and sports performance unit where they will look at what a balanced diet is, how it can impact on performance. Um, and that will carry over into the start of year 11. And then <clears throat> in November in year 11, they will then start their exam unit where it will be based around reducing the risk of sports injuries and dealing with common medical uh, conditions. So the roles of a physiotherapist, uh, first aider, even a sports psychologist uh, to an extent. Um, so there will be a lot of uh, career pathway areas covered throughout the course. So if you are interested in any of these units or the content that we cover, um, please you know take a good look at it and if it is for you then definitely uh, put sports science down um, if it isn't for you and you just enjoy sport which is absolutely fine uh, maybe in just focus on core PE uh, throughout key stage four these are some of the potential future options post uh, 16 so you could stay at Chalfonts Community College and do a BTEC uh, or do other alternative college op options. Um, you can go up to university and do sports studies, coaching, science. There's a large or wide range of courses uh, in sport uh, that you could use this course to propel yourself onto. Uh, there's also UCFB, which is a very new uh, avenue for those involved in football, uh, like the football context of things. Um, and they, some of the things that we cover on this course will be going into further and more depth along with other topics at university. And as you say, shown below and previously, these are the kind of avenues you could be going down. So if you are interested in careers in these areas, this would be very much a good stepping stone uh, moving forwards. So what now? Things to think about. Um, obviously, they're big decisions for you. Uh, think carefully about your options as this will be something you need to commit to for two years um, and you need to hit the ground running. If you are not sure, ask your PE teachers for an honest opinion as to whether you would be a good fit for sports science. Again, it's very different to other GCSE courses. Um, so they will give you an honest bit of feedback as to whether you would be a good fit and whether it'd be a good choice for you. Because at the end of the day, we want to make sure you make the right choices for you uh, and help you succeed and get the best grades possible. Um, and you will still obviously get your once a week PE lessons at Key Stage 4 as the current uh, Key Stage 4 cohort have now. Uh, and you'll be in the similar groups as you are now. It'll be very similar to what you do now. Um, but the sports science will be purely th theory um 99 theory maybe with the odd one or two lessons uh literally one or two lessons where you will do fitness testing and uh, training programs to improve your fitness um so that's it if you do have any questions uh please do not hesitate to get in touch or students you can come and uh, speak with myself or you can have a chat with your pe teacher uh, regarding the course hello uh, my name is Mr. Carr, I'm the leader for science and today I'm going to be discussing what triple science is and what how um, the option works for obviously your son or daughter moving forward for next year. Screen on. So, firstly, um, all your sons and daughters will have to do some sort of science and it's just a question of whether they do what we call the old double or combined science. And if you've had sons or daughters, older siblings that have come through this one, um, then obviously you'll know about it. Um, or you're potentially doing triple science. Now, with combined science, that's two GCSEs, 
That's two papers that are one hour and 15 minutes long, and that's what everyone will do. So it's a mixture of biology, chemistry, and physics. All the points add up to a series of, point, um, a series of points, and then the higher you go, it's a level ladder, which I'll show in a second. Triple science is an option one. Now these are you can see the exams are slightly longer, half an hour longer than each subjects um, in each biology, chemistry, and physics. And they'll still do two exams in biology, chemistry, and physics. However, they will get three GCSEs due to the extra content. And their grading is slightly different, which I'll show you on the next, uh, next animation here. So on current triple science, which you can see on the left here, um, we'll have the uh, different grades, so we'll have separate grades. And they range from higher, which is grade nine, all the way down to the foundation tier, which go down to grade one. Um, and, and I'll talk more about tiers in a second. But they'll end up with three separate grades. So for example, a grade nine, a grade nine, and a grade nine. So ideally, best case scenario, a, a nine in biology, a nine in chemistry, and a nine in physics. That's what some students will choose to do if they choose to do triple science today. And that's what I'm going to talk about more today. However, the majority of the year group, uh, because we will only have two sets of triple science, we'll do what we call combined science, which is just here. I'm just going to move my screen slightly so my face is out of the way. Um, now, combined science means you get a double grade, so it's a nine and a nine. So imagine the dash in between the numbers is an and, and that's the reason they spend so much time with us in science in the um, year 10 and year 11, is due to the fact that we will get two GCCs out of it. So a 9, 9, an 8, 8, 7, 7, and then it goes from 9, 9 to 9, 8. That means a 9 and a grade 8. And this is almost like a level ladder. So the more points they get in each of those six exams, biology, chemistry, and physics, um, so two biology, two chemistry, two physics, the further up the ladder they'll get, and the harder points they'll get. Um, what the thing we're looking for, obviously, is the tiers, and obviously looking at the correct tiers. Um, those dashes just try to represent whether they can choose to do A-level science, which we'll be talking about. Right. Um, this, the ones they're looking for, as with in all subjects, is a 4-4. Four, four. That's two passes. A 4-3 would be one pass and one fail, technically. Obviously, U is said to be a fail. Um, and then a 5-5 five, five is the top pass. Okay. So, um, obviously, the, short, the topics is are half an hour longer, so obviously they'll cover obviously a lot more concepts than the standard, obviously the uh, combined scientists or the double scientists. Um, so in biology, um, they'll go through the kidney, the brain, and the eye, which is only done by the triple scientist. In chemistry, they'll look at transition metals, harbor process, and titration, I might name them a few. And physics, the big topic they do, which is obviously not unique to the triple science, is space. So if they're well into their space, obviously due to triple science, they'll get their chance to learn about it. Okay. Uh, choosing triple and not to choose triple. So these are the sort of conversations I have with your son and daughter. Why to choose triple? Um, they should be saying, well, I'm good at science. And um, looking at their recent report, are they working at or working above? And um, they like science because they're going to spend a lot of time in science. So it's the standard amount of time plus four extra hours. Um, well, it's well. So it's going to be quite a lot of time in science. If they can go to enjoy it. Um, I always try and say stick to what you enjoy. Um, no, um, the next one is, um, are they willing to put the work in to achieve this success? Are they willing to put the work in? Because it's going to be hard and obviously there's going to be some concepts where obviously it's quite tricky and they're quite niggly. So they're going to have to spend lots of time working with their career. Reasons not to do yeah. science. I want to blow stuff up every lesson. I will get to do lots of practical. There will be lots of practical in the course, but not every lesson. So don't just see it as a practical based subject because there is quite a lot of content. I want to do dissections. Well, there is some dissections, but I want to see if Rob has gone out of the curriculum. So they will get to do a lung, a heart, and a kidney, and possibly an eye as well. Um, so obviously that would be a good one. I can't think of another option. Uh, well, I thought of two or three options, and uh, two options, and I'm just going to chuck triple down science down as a reserve. As we know, some of the reserves can get chosen as main subjects. Uh, my mates are going to do it. Well, as with all other subjects, potentially your friends might, obviously their friends might change, so obviously they'll have to do it. I hate practicals, um, so there is quite a lot of practical element in the course, so don't obviously choose it because you don't like it. Uh, my favourite teacher teaches it, as with all other subjects, potentially obviously they, they may not get their favourite teacher next year. They will get a biology teacher, a chemistry teacher and a physics teacher, uh, but we can't obviously guarantee it will be their favourite one. I hate physics, so I just do biology and chemistry. Uh, no, the, the line from the government is broad and balanced, so they want obviously a mixture of all the subjects. Okay. Uh, next one, a couple of frequency asked questions. Um, how many GCSEs will my son or daughter get, or will they get? And um, they'll get two for combined and three for triple, so uh, a 9-9 and nine, 9-8. Nine, nine, or, for example, with triple, they get an 8-8 eight, and eight, an 8. An 8 for biology, 8 for chemistry, 8 for physics. Just combined as a mixture. Can they still do A-level if they do combined and not do triple? Yes, of course they can. They just need to achieve a grade 6. 
um, as either a 6.6 or a 6.5 um, in their combined term. Can you do biology and chemistry and not physics? No, the line from the government a couple of years ago, so our teaching friend, Mr. Gove, Michael Gove, um, suggested that they want the curriculum broad and balanced. Um, so unlike how many of you will have learned in, um, in today in respect to your GCSEs, um, they don't have to do all three GCSEs and then they get points for each one. Um, if I do combined, is it only foundation? No, no. Uh, both combined and high trip will go from not grade nine to grade all the way down to a grade U. So it's not a question some people think if I do triple, it's automatically higher. No, triple can be foundation as well. If I do triple, do you have to do a whole higher? Now that's the beauty of the triple course, is what you can do is do higher biology and higher physics, and then foundation chemistry, or like, like the, uh, what we're in there. So higher biology and higher chemistry and foundation physics. So um, yeah, there you go. Um, thank you for listening. That's the end of the presentation. Um, if you've got any questions, obviously I'm always on emails. It's Ian Cartwright at chalfonts.org. Um, or obviously your science teachers, uh, the sons or daughters science teachers can also triple trip as well. But um, parents, I suggest you obviously go to me and then obviously I can triage it. Either I'll answer it or I'll give it to the teacher. And um, you've got parents even coming up as well, so that'll be a nice chance to have a chat as well um, about the options. Okay. Thank you very much. Have a lovely day. Goodbye.